What are your thoughts on a threesome? How do you feel about sex toys? What's an orgasm? It's Lauren. Welcome back to my channel. I just want to acknowledge that for some reason, and I, I can't, I can't put my finger on what it is, but I look so dinky, or like the background looks dinky. I can't figure out what it is, but some kind of perspective illusion is happening, and I, 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 I don't, I don't know what's happening. So bear with me. Everything's getting mounted next week. I've got a chair coming. I've got a lamp coming and we're about to be in business It has been almost an entire year since our last girl talk video and I just like cannot Wrap my head around the fact that we were painting that like Mona Lisa situation Almost a year ago like cannot compute I feel like the feedback was so overwhelmingly positive and we are obviously not having enough conversations to normalize so many of these issues that literally 50% of the population are experiencing I have a feeling that this video is going to be pretty thorough So to give you an idea of some of the questions we're going to be talking about it's questions around body hair and shaving So many questions about shaving. Oh my god I had no idea that there were just like so many questions pertaining to it, painful sex, sex toys, birth control, going to the gynecologist. If you feel personally attacked by me reminding you that you need to go see your gyno, you probably should go see your gyno. When I was going through all of the questions on Instagram, it made me genuinely so sad that just like the overarching theme and sentiment to so many of these questions was just like shame and guilt and pressure to feel normal or pressure to feel accepted by your partner. And it just made me feel like we are not having enough conversations to normalize all of these topics. So without further ado, I've got my canvas. She is primed, she is prepped. I have no plan. I have no idea what I'm painting today, but I feel like the vibes are good. Just hanging, answering girl questions and doing a little painting. First question is about planning sex. Sometimes I feel like I have self-inflicted dry spells, LMAO. So we have talked about this, I feel like a lot on the podcast, where instead of thinking about planning sex, we think of it as planning intimacy. Oh my God, I thought that was a glob of paint. So instead of having the pressure to be like, we are having sex tonight, I think it's just more important to set time for you to be intimate and spend quality time together. So whatever that means, if it's like a night off where you make dinner together or where you set up like a cute bubble bath situation and if it leads to sex, great. But the goal is to really just set time for you to connect with each other. I have never used this, it's a paint spray shield, but I think it'll work as like a squeegee. This is obviously not a proper paint squeegee, but we are improvising here. Oh, oh my God, bitch, go off. Wow, fun. Is it true that not all enjoy vaginal sex because I can't orgasm from just vaginal? Bitch, neither can I. And I Googled this because I was pretty sure it was a really high number, but I didn't want to get it messed up. But about 75% of all women cannot orgasm from just vaginal penetration. Whenever I say the word penetration, I think of Rebel Wilson in Pitch Perfect where she's like, not a good enough reason to use the word penetration. But you are literally in the majority there. And I mean, if you can orgasm from just penetration, good for you, that is less work on your behalf. But most girls can't. Am I the only one who gets period shits? Like the need to poop all the time when on your period. Another one, bitch, same. Period poops are very real and we need to normalize the fact that period poops are a thing. And I think it's just because there's a lot going on in there and it's just something that I have come to expect when I'm on my period. I have a new technique that I wanna try and it's using a cling wrap and I'm a little nervous. We are venturing into uncharted territory currently. Um, but I think it's gonna be good. Is it normal to have uneven breasts at around age 15 to 16? I feel like my answers have literally been the same for the first three questions. Bitch, same. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even remember what age I got boobies. I still haven't gotten boobies, but the boobies that I do have, my left is bigger than my right. It always has been bigger than my right. And I don't know what the stat for this is either, but I think most women and girls have one side that is a little bit bigger. I don't know if I actually know a single person who has like 
the same symmetrical boobs. Like it is completely, completely normal and probably honestly the majority to have uneven breasts. Is being too vanilla bad? 100% no. And I hope that you don't like carry any kind of guilt to feel like you're not normal or you're not like freaky enough in the bedroom. Every single person has their own preference and it's all just about communication and knowing what you're comfortable with and making sure that your partner also knows what you're comfortable with. So many questions about birth control, what birth controls I've tried, what birth controls are good for. And the number one thing here is that I am just a random bitch on the internet. I highly encourage you to talk to your doctor or your gynecologist because there are so many options and every body is going to react to them differently. And I cannot predict the future of you and your birth control. But what I can speak to is that birth control can be used for so many different things. Again, talk to your doctor, but I have so many friends and myself that have used birth control for one, birth control, but also um, period cramps, hormonal imbalances, acne, migraines. So I started on the pill when I was maybe 15 or 16 and starting to become sexually active. And not only did it help clear up my skin when I had like hormonal teenage acne, um, but the pill was fine for me. I didn't have any crazy side effects. I definitely had friends who had a ton of weight gain. I was on the pill for maybe a year or so before switching over to the Nuva Ring, which a friend of mine had recommended and she loved it. And I wanna tell you right now, this is uh, not the best way to get your birth control recommendations. I love when birth controls really work out for your friends, but that does not mean that they will work out for you. The Nuva Ring though, luckily was great. Loved it, everything was great. Acne, great, weight gain, fine. And then I fell victim to um, a birth control working out really well for my friend and our whole friend group went on Nexplanon and then our whole friend group went off of Nexplanon when it all of us except Tiffany Ma up. So Nexplanon for me personally was a living nightmare hell. And so that fucked me up big time. It's the one that's like the little matchstick that goes into your arm. Got that taken out. The process was totally painless and uh, went back onto the Nuvering because it had worked for me. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that was a life lesson that I learned that I will stick with and I will continue to stay on the new ring because things things are good for me things are stable and I like it and I'm gonna stay here I have this big boy brush and I um, won this shit was so expensive oh my god and I'm just scared to use it because it was so expensive we just do it right like we just do it things are looking good nothing's gone like crazy awry and I think I think we just do it I think we just do it just drop the cap straight into wet paint. Okay, here we go about the pap smear. Guys, I promise, I promise it is not that bad and for the sake of your health, please, 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 if you are putting off going to the gynecologist, please, this is your sign. If you feel personally attacked, if you feel personally victimized, this is your sign book your pap smear. And to be fair, I put mine off for maybe like a solid six months. I was like, oh, it's the pandemic. Like I don't want to go to the doctor's office. I feel safer at home. That was a bold face lie. And I'm admitting to that guilt. Uh, and, and eventually I went, so it's fine. But I definitely psyched myself out for it to be such a painful and awkward and horrible experience. It really is not that bad, I promise. For the sake of your health, it is super not that bad. I think the biggest thing to remember is that everything up in there is a muscle. So when you're nervous and you're tense and you're not able to relax, that muscle is tight and it can definitely make it more uncomfortable than it needs to be. I know when you've got your coochie out, in the fluorescent lights of the doctor's office it is not super easy to feel super comfortable and I get there trust me I had my legs up in the little stirrups uh, just a few months ago and I vividly remember but it will make such a difference if you're able to just relax I made a fatal mistake with the pink I don't like it I don't like it at all and I'm gonna try and cover up all of it this is kind of a vibe though how much does the first time actually hurt this is the most annoying answer in the entire world and I am fully aware of that but it's just going to be so different for every person and again I know how annoying that is as someone who loves to be prepared for every moment of their entire life that is so unbelievably 
not helpful to prepare. But again, that's the reality of it is that it's going to be different for every single person and everyone's experience is going to be different. I wholeheartedly believe and encourage you to be with someone that you trust and someone that you're able to have very clear and open communication. I think that will definitely lead you to have a more positive experience and pain wise, it's gonna be different for everyone. I've had friends where it feels like nothing and completely zero to 10 on the pain scale. I've had friends say that it was pretty painful. I would say that I personally probably fall somewhere in the middle of that around a 5.5 out of 10. And I was with my boyfriend at the time. It was super chill and relaxed and just like comfortable. And we talked through it. And we honestly tried a few times. Like the first time it didn't happen. Second time it like, half happened <laughs> and then obviously it eventually did happen but it was something that we had to communicate and be like okay no like this hurts too much like, i don't want to do it anymore sex with nubering in or out so personally i keep mine in during sex i don't actually know if jeremy and i have had this conversation at some point I i'm sure we have but i reconfirmed the answer and asked the participating parties if they were able to feel it and we can both agree that it's not uncomfortable in any way i can't feel it personally and on his side what he feels is I guess like a ridge. I don't entirely know what that means and I also can't give it any more description than that because I don't know what that feels like. The bottom line is that it's not painful and not uncomfortable. Okay let's talk shaving. This was the number one question. Maybe because like summertime is on the horizon. We've also been in hibernation basically for over a year now and uh, people are feeling some kind of way about it. So I think the two most common questions were how to do it and how much much. The bottom line of this topic forever and always is that it is up to you. It is your body and it is your decision. It is your hair and it's up to you. If your partner ever makes a comment that shames you for your decision, bitch, good Bye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. See you never. That is some bullshit that we are not here for. I think because this is something that people are self-conscious about, they forget how to rationalize this almost. Like, imagine your partner was like, hey, I'm only gonna date you and I only wanna be with you if you have a tiger striped mohawk. Not to shame or guilt anyone that f with a tiger striped mohawk, that's not the point. But if that's not something that you want for yourself or you're comfortable with, you would be like, bitch, I'm not gonna cut my hair into a tiger striped mohawk. Like there's just no world where you would ever think that that would be okay. And it's the same thing for your partner trying to tell you what is and is not okay for your own body hair. It is absolutely and always will be your decision. And as for how to shave down there, I feel like there's probably a YouTube tutorial um, somewhere on the internet that's going to be more helpful than my advice. But in my experience, I think that people are scared to know like what their kuju looks like. It's part of your body. Like get a mirror, sit cross-legged, put a leg up in the shower like it's not something that you should be unfamiliar with and so I think that deters women and girls from not being able to maneuver properly and you probably already know this but it makes such a difference to have a good razor one that is sharp and new and clean shaving creams super helpful personally I just use a bar of unscented dove soap I know things can get a little mixed up once there's fragrances and so I just avoid all of that altogether how do you get rid of any fake Facial hair. So personally, I like dermaplaning uh, and I actually started doing it um, up, like above my brows. So I have like tiny little baby hairs basically, but it's not enough to like pluck. Like there's too many of them and they're too light. So I learned how to dermaplane um, just above my brows and I found that like anywhere else on your face works really, really well as well in my own personal experience. I don't have a ton of experience outside of just like shaving and dermaplaning. I would love though to hear from you if you've done laser anywhere on your body. That's something that I am definitely interested in trying in the future. But again, this is similar to like all hair questions. It is totally up to you if you wanna get rid of it, great. If not, great. It is totally a personal preference and you have so many options. Threading, shaving, dermaplaning, sugaring, waxing, 
lasering, bleaching. Like there are just so many options. So I encourage you to do your research if you are looking to remove it or alter it in any way. Also, I wanna pause super quick. Uh, to do some myth busting. I googled this not too long ago when I started dermaplaning and bitch, I'm 27. Like I just learned this this year. And so I feel like this is a well-known myth that shaving causes hair to grow back thicker. You've heard it, I'm sure a thousand times. I'm sure someone has warned you that that will absolutely happen. And guess the f what? Great news, it doesn't. That shit stuck around my entire life and I cannot believe that I went 27 years thinking that this was true. I'm gonna read this just straight up off of the internet. So a razor cannot change the color, thickness, or growth rate of the hair. The root of the hair is thicker, and when you dermaplane or shave it off, it removes the tip that has gradually tapered to be thinner at the end, and eventually the tip just grows back. Bitch, you heard it here first. Um, I can also leave a link to my reference. So call your mom, tell a friend, because um, that is the mother <laughs> facial hair tea. What are your thoughts on a threesome if your partner brought it up? So if it's not something that you are comfortable with, and by the little cry face emoji in the question, I feel like like you're not comfortable with it, I think that you definitely need to communicate that with your partner and they need to respect that wish. If you are in a committed monogamous relationship and this would be something that's a little different for you guys and out of the ordinary, it's communication and comfort levels that you both need to be on the same page 100% on. This is one that I've never seen before. How do you unawkwardly pee after sex? I feel like the moment that sex is over, I am sprinting to the bathroom so that I can pee and just avoid facing the wrath of a UTI. So I can't imagine not wanting to do that. So I guess I've never really encountered this before. I think you just have to take the jump and just excuse yourself to the bathroom, pee, avoid the UTI and climb back into bed and resume the cuddle. Obviously, you know your situation best and it might throw off the vibe a little bit, but bitch, it is not worth the risk of a UTI. Is sending nudes bad? My personal advice uh, and just like thing to remember is that as soon as you send a nude, it is no longer under your control. As much as you trust that individual things can happen, uh, the photo can fall into the hands of someone that you did not plan it to. And so I think it's just being aware of the after effects of just not being in control of that content anymore and thinking about if you're okay with that. How do you feel about sex toys? Personally, I'm a big fan. And going back to uh, our statistic about how 75% of women cannot reach orgasm just through penetration. Bitch treat yourself. On a serious note, I definitely encourage you to um, just learn what you like and figure out what feels good to you. And if that also means incorporating that into your relationship, I'm all for it. What's an orgasm? I think the best way to describe this is like a full body sneeze, but it feels really good. Let me know if you have a better metaphor, but that's the best that I can do, I think. Is it normal for sex to be uncomfortable? I think the main answer here is yes, it's totally normal for sex to sometimes be uncomfortable. If you think it's uncomfortable to the point of pain, definitely go talk to your doctor or your OBGYN. There are so many different factors that can contribute to sex being uncomfortable. But I think my main advice here is that for me personally, my physical connection can definitely be tied to my my emotional connection. I also think that it's about your partner warming you up, you being 100% comfortable. And again, like how we talked about how everything down there is a muscle. If you're holding stress and tension, there's a high chance there's a direct correlation to sex being uncomfortable. Okay, those are all the questions that I have for this video. Let me know if this is a type of video that you enjoy, that you wanna see more of, if you have more questions outside of what we talked about in today's video. I want to leave you with a little nugget of advice and it's around just ensuring that you are confident, you are comfortable, and you are doing what's best for you. Not for your partner, not for your friends, not for some douchebag who says that you need to look or feel a certain way. It is so, so, so important that you are putting yourself first in all of these scenarios. And there are also so many resources online if you have more questions or concerns. I encourage you to reach out to your doctor, your OBGYN, 
again to a friend or family member that you trust. These conversations need to be normalized. Again, like 50% of the world has a vagina. And the fact that we are still living in so much secrecy about so many of these topics is crazy. I don't know if we can do like a painting every time we do a girl talk video because I'm not gonna have enough wall space in my house. I think I realized that I only really have one style of painting and it's this uh, because this looks very similar to the last massive painting that I did, just in a different color scheme. So apparently I only have one style and I'm gonna work on that. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Share it with a friend if you think there's something a friend could learn from it. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and the vlog channel and the podcast channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.